All right, next up we have John Chadwell. And you are? And that's your name. Frank. <laughs> Here for moral support, Frank. Moral support, yes. Yeah. So, John, if you had to uh, plant an herb garden, uh, which uh, celebrity gardener would you hire? Uh, yeah, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Good answer. So we're going to go full screen, and I'm going to hit the button, and you're going to get started. All right, ready? Hello, I'm John Chadwell. I'm here representing Hope One Source. I am actually a DevOps engineer or a manager for FireEye, a large, or a large cybersecurity company. But I'm going to talk to you about what you can do in the volunteer space outside of your normal day and how that can be better. So you've got an interesting job in DC. You're doing really cool stuff, using your skills, and you've got all this ability. But maybe your job feels morally ambiguous. John Oswald got into that a little bit today. you know. And, or maybe your job really helps people, but you want to do more. So here's an opportunity of how you can do that. You can get into the volunteer space and work using your skills as a developer to make products that are really useful out there in the world. And Hope One Source is a great place to do this. I'm a little biased with them, but there are other places, but I think this is one of the best. What we do is we assist the most vulnerable residents in, in our community. We connect them with the services they need, and we use a platform with an outreach tool and a messaging platform and kiosk to do this. And what we do is most homeless people have a cell phone. Over 80% of the people we work with have this. So what we use are these three features to get in touch with them and let them know about resources that are available in the community at, on a day-to-day. Day. This is a lot better than trying to hand out paper to everybody to tell them about a service that's coming. Our outreach tool is the main focus of this. This is the core. We use text messaging once we sign them up and they provide us the details of what their needs are and their, their things that they need and where they generally are. We can send targeted messages to them from their provider telling them about when a service is going to be available. This could be like a food bank open from 6 to 9 on Tuesday or a record expungement train at 9 a.m. from a community center. Um, and so then once they've signed up, they can get appointments and event reminders back to them on what, you know, when it's going to be happening and everything. We also can reach out to them through check-in kiosk where when they go, there are central areas where homeless people are getting services and stuff. We have little sign-in areas where they can sign up and get into the system so they can get information to their cell phone, telling them about other services that are available in the community. And this also allows the service providers to get real-time data about housing status of the people and what other key needs they have from the people who are coming and using their services. We also use a profile verification service, which allows us to go and get updates on these people and find out whether they are still homeless, if their number has changed, any change in house status. And we've identified many people who have left their homelessness. And they said a lot of that was from Hope One Source. So as a volunteer with us, you have that direct impact and be able to do that. A little bit of demographics about what it is mainly a lot of veterans out there that we are working with also. I wanted to point that out. Um, this is not the simplest thing to do in a sense. There's a lot of benefit, but there's a lot of challenges too. Getting documentation from, from volunteers is, is, is hard to do, right? Non-unified work schedules. Everybody has their day job. Massive bureaucracies that we deal with with these services. But there's a lot of benefits to this work. You get to work with awesome people. Everybody's got a real sense of purpose. You know who you're working for. And this allows you to stretch your knowledge base and get out there and like challenge yourself in areas you haven't before management roles um, working with you know um, other software that you haven't dealt with you also through this program we also give a chance to get out of the field and actually meet your users so we go out on different events and meet with the homeless and get them signed up directly you don't have to do it as a developer but it is a very good opportunity we have about 17 active developers that work with us there's 400 signed up we have 261 service providers in the DC area that link us up and uh, about a th about a quarter of the DC's homeless population uses our system if you were interested in doing volunteer 
volunteer work, there's a lot of different uh, tools and tech that you can use. As you can see here, if some of these areas you may not have a lot of experience in, but you could get more by doing it through a volunteer work. Um, but also, if you have experience in these, you're awesome to use. What's it like doing volunteer work in, in that kind of space? We have about two to three stories per sprint. We focus on stuff that comes from like our major code sprint work. So we have a Drupal con that we go to, that kind of stuff. And then these large hackathons, the 24th to the 26th of July, we have one coming up with IEEE sponsoring at NIH. But we usually have about 10 to 15 devs working about 60 hours of planning and development work a week. We also have an opportunity that if you want to learn more, come and talk to me about, about hiring a full-time DevOps person to help work with us on this. Um, we do fight bugs. There are problems in the system. We have about six major incidents a year. But with worldwide support on our team and being focused on you know, truly help, helping people, we keep a pretty good uptime, I think, compared to everybody else. Else. Um, I would like to, well, I had Frank up here, if you want to learn more about the volunteer space, what we do specifically or in general, come talk to me or Frank and we're happy to help you. And we'll also go through, um, if you want to see our checking kiosk and play around with some tech, we're available also.